Hello everyone, and welcome to my Days of Our Lives 24 channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. In addition, I just wanted to let you know that after this month, I will not be contacting you for child support. I realize that you were avoided with regard to your granddad's will, Kristen said. Kristen was informed by Brady that he would keep making the payments. Furthermore, I'll keep on tolerating the appearance scraps that you're willing to give me. Since I know that at some point or another, you will mess up, similar to you generally do. Furthermore, I will recover full authority of my little girl, Brady said. When Alex entered, he made a big show of how pleased he was to see Kristen. Brady requested that Kristen inform Rachel that he would be waiting in the car as Kristen and Alex passionately kissed in front of him. Brady strolled to the entryway and shook his head at seeing the darlings, then he left. Alex exclaimed, Damn, you are looking sexy. With a snicker, Kristen recommended that Alex ought to turn into an entertainer. That wasn't acting, Kristen, Alex said. Alex informed Kristen that he had advised Teresa that he would get supplies to praise his huge legacy. Then, at that point, it occurred to me that the best champagne is without a doubt in the Demera wine basement. Which I'll cover, Alex declared. Kristen proposed to recover a jug for Teresa. With a grin, Alex pulled Kristen close and told her that he liked to commend his legacy with her. Alex's return home was awaited by Teresa at her apartment. Why in the world is he taking so long? Teresa said. Teresa messaged Alex. As Teresa twirled ice 3D shapes around the flutes, Brady thumped on the front entryway. Brady apologized for the unannounced come around. I was driving by, and I was simply trusting that you may be distant from everyone else and at home, Brady made sense of. Teresa noticed that Alex would be home soon. With a moan, Brady cautioned Teresa not to pause her breathing. At the point when Brady entered the condo, he saw the champagne woodwinds. Teresa made sense of that Alex's legacy had been concluded. Really great for him, Brady said with a constrained grin. However, not very great for you. I know. Truly unjustifiable that Victor passed on everything to Maggie and Alex, Teresa said. Brady switched up the conversation to what he had seen at the chateau among Kristen and Alex. Indeed, he didn't get back home an evening or two ago. And from what you've seen, it's clear that they're sleeping together, Teresa stated. Brady concurred. Teresa inquired as to whether he was annoyed about the disclosure. No. Brady stated, I'm over her. Brady inquired as to whether she was disturbed. In fact, I am. Well, I said a final farewell to him, so, I'm at fault. Be that as it may, God, this may simply be the greatest mix-up of my life. Or on the other hand one of the greatest, Teresa said as she gestured toward Brady. Brady inquired as to whether she was infatuated with Alex, and she conceded she didn't have the foggiest idea. Brady said that when one was enamored, they felt like they couldn't live without the other individual. Then, of course, I am. I'm enamored with Alex. Kind of, in any case, Teresa said. Particularly in light of the fact that he's beneficiary of this enormous fortune now, Brady added. Teresa squinted her eyes at Brady, and he was sorry. There was a thump at the entryway. I surmise, Alex, failed to remember his key, Teresa murmured. Constantine drove past Teresa into the loft, and he halted abruptly when he saw Brady. Constantine constrained a wide grin. What are you doing here? Teresa inquired. Constantine lied and said he really wanted assistance with a wedding present. Who's getting hitched? Brady inquired. At the point when Constantine reported that he was locked into Maggie, Brady's eyes went wide in dismay. What? Brady shouted. Brady responded that he was on his way out, so Constantine made an offer to talk later. After Brady left, Teresa murmured at Constantine for having appeared without an advance notice. Constantine informed Teresa concerning Maggie's arrangement to surrender the vast majority of her fortune to good cause. Constantine added, and to some of Victor's heirs, including Brady. What then? Teresa countered. 
Constantine demanded a portion of Teresa's share in Alex's fortune from Teresa. According to our arrangement, Constantine said. Teresa responded, well, I'm not sure that's going to happen. Constantine cautioned Teresa to fix her relationship with Alex, or there would be ramifications. At the Dimera Chateau, Alex and Kristen engaged in sexual relations in her room. Subsequently, Kristen let Alex know that their issue couldn't go any farther than sex. It's simply a tomfoolery ride, Kristen said. Since you have an exclusive, keen interest in eyes for Brady, right? Alex said. With a laugh, Kristen noticed that Brady was the dad of her kid and her first love. What's more, you and Teresa? You exclusively desire her? Kristen inquired. Alex conceded he thought often about Teresa, however it didn't keep him from having intercourse with Kristen. After cycle two, Alex got his telephone to actually take a look at his messages. I told Teresa I was heading on a mission to get champagne and caviar. Thus, no doubt, she messaged me a couple of times, and she's pondering where I'm, Alex said. I suppose you simply need to go, Kristen murmured as she stroked Alex's hair. Alex smiled at Kristen, and he threw his telephone to the side. I simply don't think there is a very remarkable rush to get home, Alex said as he began to kiss Kristen once more. Steve visited John and Marlena at the penthouse, and Marlena conceded that she had requested that Steve come by. Why? John inquired. We have an arrangement. Marlena added, and I think it's time that we let Steve know about it. John conflicted. Marlena contended that John required reinforcement in light of the fact that Constantine was a perilous man. I realize there is some pressure among you and Steve this moment, however that is precisely exact thing Constantine needs, Marlena contended. Steve explained to John that he comprehended the reason why John despised him, on the grounds that Steve loathed what he had done, as well. I'm willing to take the necessary steps to compensate for it. All in all, if you don't mind, kindly let me know what's the deal with you and Constantine? Steve stated, after a second, John informed Steve that Constantine had transformed John back into the pawn. What? When? What's more, how? Steve inquired. John clarified that Megan Hathaway had brainwashed them with a card. It came to me in a memory. John continued, well, it turns out that Constantine also has that same card. How could he get it? Steve inquired. With a shrug, John said he didn't have any idea how Constantine had gotten the card, just that Constantine had utilized it the night they had met in the recreation area. John, my God! Why did you not inform me of this earlier? Steve inquired. I remembered nothing until it reoccurred only a few days ago, John made sense of. John enlightened Steve regarding Constantine's visit to Dark Fix and how Marlena had intruded on Constantine's guidelines. That is when Doc and I sort of sorted out what was happening, John said. Marlena made sense of that when she had gotten some information about his discussion with Constantine, John had been not able to recollect. I realized that he had lost time, Marlena said. She realized that something was occurring. However, she likewise realized that there was a way for me to retaliate, John added. Eased, Steve said he was appreciative John and Marlena had sorted out what Constantine had done, yet he didn't know how they had sorted it out. Marlena made sense of that after the episode at the workplace, John had not been himself when they had gotten back. Stressed, Marlena had set John under spellbinding. Perhaps in light of the fact that it worked out so as of late, the hypnotism was viable, and I had the option to take John back into the room with Constantine from before I came in, Marlena made sense of. John had recalled Constantine's instructions to steal Maggie's prenup and his red card. Marlena said that they had done whatever it may take to keep Constantine from acquiring impact over John once more. We didn't know it was even conceivable right away, John admitted. Marlena said she had worked with her partners at Bayview to utilize the equivalent deprogramming strategies that they had utilized on Harris. John clarified that Maggie had invited them over to share the news of her engagement with them and that they had appeared surprised. Maggie was expelled from a meeting.